Hello, I'm Antonio Moore. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on April 12th at about 6.30 p.m. President Trump confirmed he is giving strong consideration to transferring migrants who have entered the country illegally to so-called sanctuary cities. He's accusing Democrats of being, quote, unwilling to change our very dangerous immigration laws. Trump tweeted that the left should be happy because of its open borders policy. Former Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen reportedly pushed back and administration lawyers rejected the policy as illegal. Speaker Pelosi, whose district would have been targeted, slammed the policy through her communications director, attacking what she called the, quote, administration's cynicism and cruelty, saying using human beings, including little children, as pawns is despicable and in some cases criminal. Pelosi number two in the House, Teddy Hoyer, also condemned Trump, saying that using a federal agency for political retribution is not the act of a democratic government. The White House has often showed a disturbing lack of coordination and disregard for the truth, and it did so again today. At 11.34, a White House official said the sanctuary city proposal was a non-story because it had been informally raised and quickly rejected. Barely an hour later, Trump tweeted that the opposite was true. This followed various stories this week about how GOP leaders on Capitol Hill are tired of the constant reversals by Trump, especially when they are given no notice and are blindsided by him. Top leaders, including Senators McConnell, Cornyn, and Graham, said there needs to be more collaboration and communication. Trump reportedly told the head of Customs and Border Protection that he'd grant him a pardon if he were sent to jail for having his agents block asylum seekers from entering the U.S. in defiance of American law. This is said to have happened just last week before Trump elevated Kevin McAleenan to be the acting Secretary of Homeland Security. It's not clear if the comment was a joke. The White House denied that Trump asked McAleenan to do anything illegal. President Obama's top lawyer pleaded not guilty this afternoon to making false statements to federal prosecutors about his work alongside Paul Manafort for the disgraced former president of Ukraine. Craig's indictment arose from special counsel Mueller's investigation. Trump weighed in, complaining that the media is not paying enough attention to the Craig case. Like it or not, he's right. Craig is a prominent Democrat and one of DC's most powerful attorneys but his indictment is getting minimal attention from major news organizations that focused obsessively on the indictments of minor figures connected to the Trump campaign. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is promising from jail in London to fight extradition. A hearing will be held on May 2nd to begin the process of determining whether he'll be sent to the U.S. to face trial for conspiring to steal government secrets. Prosecutors in Sweden may also want to reopen a sexual assault case against Assange that was dropped when the investigation was stymied by his asylum at Ecuador's embassy to the UK. Ecuador lifted that asylum yesterday, accusing Assange of misbehavior. Ecuador's current president is seeking to deepen ties with the U.S. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is backing his boss, Attorney General William Barr, saying that the notion that Barr is trying to mislead people is completely bizarre. Rosenstein, who appointed Robert Mueller to lead the Russia investigation, spoke out for the first time following the Mueller probe's conclusion. Barr has come under fire for his short summary of Mueller's report and for claiming that there was spying on the Trump campaign by federal officials who were charged with investigating it. Rosenstein insisted Barr is being as forthcoming as he can. Former FBI Director James Comey has also weighed in, claiming he had no idea what Barr was talking about when he made the spying allegations. Kim Jong-un may have emerged more powerful than ever after a major leadership shuffle in North Korea. Analysts believe he has consolidated his control over the country with the naming of a new nominal head of state and a new premier. Kim remains the chairman of the State Affairs Commission and has acquired a new title himself, with state media now referring to him as, quote, supreme representative of all the Korean people. Federal officials are looking into charging the 21-year-old son of a sheriff's deputy for hate crimes. He has already been charged with arson for allegedly setting fire to three historically black churches in Louisiana. No one was harmed in the incidents, which took place when the churches were empty. Still, the NAACP decried the act as domestic terrorism 
and Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards said these were evil acts. At least one person has died as a result of a monster storm that has made its way across half the continental United States this week, causing an estimated $3 billion in damages. The worst of the snow is over, but the combination of lighter snow and strong winds is keeping visibility poor and causing difficult travel, travel conditions in the upper Midwest. A separate system is expected to cause an outbreak of severe storms across the South and the Ohio Valley, possibly causing strong tornadoes starting Saturday evening. Heavy rainfall and flash flooding are also possible. The severe weather could affect the final day of the Masters in Augusta, Georgia, where Tiger Woods is very much in the mix. He's still playing, but right now he is just two strokes behind five players who are tied for the lead, including Brooks Kepka, Adam Scott, and Jason Day. Phil Mickelson trails the leaders by three. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com, where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at AmoraTV. Have a great weekend. I will see you again on Monday.